zoom. Okay, so I think we can just go ahead. Um, I will share the recording later on YouTube anyway. So for those that are missing out. So welcome to Research Corner, our guest webinar. My name is Josie. Um, today we are going to look at how can we choose research topic, especially in postgraduate studies, so at postgraduate level, but the same criteria can also be used in undergrad, uh, especially at honors level. The main difference, the, the main reason I highlighted postgraduate is that undergraduate students get a lot of help and a lot of coaching from uh, the supervisors. And most times they still really have a lot to learn, but it's really the same process that you follow. So it can, this can also be beneficial if you are doing your post, uh, like there was somebody who was doing a diploma, postgraduate diploma, that is anyway postgraduate and honors that is also counted as somewhat postgraduate. Again, I, I just want to start with the disclaimer that the views and opinions in this presentation do not represent uh, or they are not to be interpreted to be associated with uh, the organizations that I'm associated with, like the University of Namibia, which is my employer. And that I'm not an expert, I'm just trying to uh, learn as doing because I enjoy research. And uh, when it comes to discussions and opinions, let's give everybody a chance and let everyone express themselves without uh, worrying if somebody's laughing or discrediting someone's idea. Yeah, and of course, uh, in capital letters that I am not uh, in position to do research for other people. However, it, it's, not, it's recommended to get people to help you with research in terms of coaching, what to do, or maybe proofreading your work. And at the end of the presentation, I will say some um, adverts for the research corner friends that um, in this business of helping students. I'm currently not in a position to, to help uh, students, except because uh, those that I supervise. So let's just get into it. Um, I tried to, to put this really in simple way or not too scientific and not so probably somebody could have put it differently i try to put it in a way that is uh easy for everyone to understand so i i i think when you are choosing a topic there are more about five major steps uh that one uh uses to have to come to a, a right topic and this is really also to highlight to a lot of people, I'm sure if there are fellow academics here, we get uh, this question, can you please give me a topic? Can you give me a topic for my, my I want to apply for master's, um, can you give me a topic? And, and then you wonder like, how can I give you a topic? Because it's a process, you don't just wake up and then you, cho you choose something you need to work on it, think about it, go through these steps, and then you can have a right topic. 
So don't look at somebody with a side eye when they say, no, I cannot give you a topic, even if they're in that specific field, unless if they already have available topics, maybe if it's your lecturer and they have available topic, you can approach them to say, um, do you have uh, topics uh, in this area also? But otherwise, please um, bear with us. You, you can't just think of a topic at the top of, of your mind. So here are some of the, the steps that one needs to follow. Um, I will go through uh, the steps. The first one is choosing the area of specialization or field of study. Uh, this might sound really uh, already obvious, but it's not so obvious because, you know, if you look at most of the field of studies that we, we have done, they branch out. So I, I can use an example of geology because I'm a geologist. Here we uh, usually, we, uh, uh, um, sorry. Here we usually, have a specialization like hydrogeology, which looks at water. Then we have maybe economic geology, which looks at mining and so on, and other types of 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 um, types of uh, specialization. Sorry, I think I'm getting a lot of people still asking for login details. Sorry. That's why it's, it's a bit disturbing. So first you need to define what, what area you, you are interested in, in the different uh, fields. And then, in, I mean, in, the, in your field, because that gives you an idea what really interests you. Uh, so imagine uh, you are maybe also, if you are doing a nursing, for instance, you can also have areas like, I want to deal with kids, then you go to pediatrician if you want to, or maybe you want to go into public health and, and stuff like that. So that means that you, you first need to find your passion and then you can, it helps you to direct your thoughts towards uh, that. So there is no greater secret to having a good topic than reading. I don't know how to emphasize this, that you need to read as much as you can read before you can come up with a topic. And when you know what field you want to go into, you need to familiarize yourself with what are the current trends in, the, in your field of study. Are there some new methods that are being developed? Are there some new policies that needs to be implemented or that have probably some policies that have been implemented, but now uh, you want to see, are they being effective and are there some controversies in your field? Those already are the kind of thoughts that you need to have to, to kind of synthesize your, your, um, your thoughts. And then really important is you need to be passionate with this because when you choose this field, it means that you are going to be in that field probably for the rest of your life because now you are narrowing down, you are specializing. So you need to know what is, what is your favorite subject or area in your field of study. So you need to choose something that you are passionate about. And that's why I think that is one of the major way to um, start when you are looking for research topic. Because imagine you are doing education and you come and ask uh, somebody, ask for a topic or you, you have a topic that is related to uh, leadership in education, but you are not interested in becoming a, a, an HOD or principal or whatsoever, and you are not interested in leadership positions. So it means that you have to, um, 
to to really make sure that whatever topics you are you are choosing is then finally aligning what with what you are passionate about. Um, and then, of course, the the first step now to or second step, which is like first to the specific topic, is that you need to brainstorm. You have to have several ideas that you list. And sometimes you can even look at different areas, even up to four or five areas. Sometimes these are area in terms of a scientific content, uh, or it can be area in terms of locations if you are really already content with what you want to do. A lot of uh, times uh, students think that uh, getting far too, uh, too specific at these early stages is, is a, a good thing, but it's really one of the mistakes that they make. You need to be as broad as possible when you're starting thinking about your topic. So, and then you put down your ideas, bullet points always works. And the objective of starting off with a finalized idea is to save time but the time you will spend getting to uh, that stage will help you with the rest of the process. So it's not best, uh, it's best not to rush it. So basically in, in short is to say, a lot of us, we want to get the topic done and overall, but it helps you when you read more and you understand more. Um, before even coming up with the topic, it makes your life easier because it's already like you're coming up with a, a research proposal in short. So start by picking a very broad subject. The, the more the widespread, the better. And then the, the third step now. So if you have a widespread, um, very broad topic, you want to now come down to narrowing it down. This will help you determine whether or not your subject has depth and is worth pursuing. So is it worth for you to continue on that subject? If these steps takes uh, a little time, you find yourself changing your mind about your topic, don't worry because once you nail this step, the rest will become easy. So don't, be, don't feel bad actually in uh, simple ways don't feel bad if you keep changing the topic every day you come you have a different idea the other day but what is key is you must write these ideas down otherwise they keep circling in your head just like with any other thing that you do if you plan and you don't write things down they will just keep being in your head and have hundreds of of of, of those on your head in your head uh, also, the idea is to get uh, your broad idea and then extract particular element of a subject. Then you have to take uh, that aspect and make it even more specific. So when we say that uh, topic should be broad is maybe using keywords, like if you have a, a topic which is like less than four words, that is just um, keywords. For instance, if we use an example of, of COVID-19, so maybe you want to do an assessment related to COVID-19 um, from a health perspective or from uh, how did it affect communities. If you just put a, a topic to say COVID-19, um, effects of COVID-19, that is very broad, you know? It can be effect on people, is it on economies, is it on students, is it on what? So that is very broad. So effects on, of COVID on, on human beings. It's, it's a very broad topic, but it's a very good starting point because you, you have an idea that you want to see the effect that COVID had on people. It's just a matter of refining it. So when you come here at step number three, then you must now add to add more topics to this to say, okay, what um, 
what how can i make it more specific which kind of uh, human beings am i going to focus on am i going to focus on students and what exactly about student am i going to look at then you add it to become more like a sentence so you add some uh, modifying words and phrases to claim the topic that uh, could interest the reader. So it's very important that the topic is very catchy. Very key is also that you must turn then your topic, your whatever you have selected out of this uh, list of uh, possible topics, you turn it into a research question. The research question will help you with the context of your topic. The, the question should be answerable, but not a yes or, or no uh, kind of answer. It should kind of require that you extend, you have to describe or you have to go into detail for you to answer that specific uh, question. So for instance, with this topic of COVID, if you, you would say, okay, I'm looking at uh, the effects of COVID-19 on um, students' performance at the University of Namibia. Then when you come here at the research question, then you can say, does COVID uh, have effect on students' performance at the University of Namibia? So you... It looks like you can say, yes, it does, or yes, it doesn't have it, but it's not straightforward. You need some proof for you to, to prove really that yes, it really did have an effect. So you now have to start thinking of what parameters are going to help you um, find that there was an effect or not. And that is how uh, it's important for you to have this answerable question with, but not answered with a uh, yes or no. Okay, then there's uh, the five, uh, the fifth step, which is also key. So suppose now you have your research question or your, now, which is also can be interchanged. You can also refine it to a research topic. Then you now really have to research on your topic. Okay, so here you, one of my favorite tool to use is always Google Scholar. I, once you put in uh, that topic, then you can find out, is that topic, has it been done already? Or has there been similar work that has been done uh, in that area maybe it's just the topic is just phrased differently um has or if it was done in other areas or in other parts of the world what um criteria what method did they use so it's to get to understand your your topic a little bit more and to really understand whether it's a doable topic. So during your reviewing of uh, this, your topic or researching your topic on, on, uh, on Google Scholar or other platforms where you have access to scientific information is that um, you, you should be able to get uh, from the review, you should be able to get the, the previous work that has been done in that study area that you are working or in the field. Also, you must able to kind of already identify basic uh, things like uh, gaps in knowledge. And if there are some shortcomings in terms of the methods or theories, if there is indication for further research, this is also very key. I usually also advise a lot of people to say, okay, if you are reading in, in a specific area, try to read, uh, skim through the document, but try to read your abstract and the conclusion. In the conclusion or at the end of the abstract, normally you would find, um, you would find a, a lot of recommendations. 
And this is an indication of further research that needs to be done. And it can be something that you take up because somebody indicated the need for it to be done. It means it's, it's valid and it, it's probably needed. So sometimes also you find there are questions that are not answered. And again, you, you find some authors, they indicate that this is still not clear from, we have done this research, but there is still these unclear questions. Of course, if there are disagreements in literature, that is also a good starting point for a topic uh, because you can say, okay, these guys are saying this, then let me see who is right. Um, and then uh, theoretical frameworks that might need to be revised or uh, to resolve controversies, especially if you are on uh, con doing like a conceptual or theoretical kind of uh, research. So once you go through that process, finally, then you have your topic coming out. I think somebody was playing with my screen. Um, so the, 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 the topic then that come out, the qualities there is that it should be uh, should provide a specific summary of the proposed work. It should be as clear and concise as possible. We don't want a very long, long topic, but we, we still want to get the idea of what we are doing. In most cases, we also want to get an idea of what methods are you using to do that. And from the title, one should be able to infer clearly the subject of a research or your, your thesis or dissertation. Thesis is usually used for masters and then dissertation is usually used for uh, PhD. The title should be self-explanatory and limited to the scope of a study. So when I read your title, I must not wonder what is the person trying to do? It must be clear and that's why it also brings in a little bit aspect of what methods are you going to do uh, to use. So like uh, with the example of COVID, um, the effects of COVID, you can uh, probably infer to say using a qualitative approach or using whatever approach, a case study or something like that, that gives you an idea of the type of method that one is using. Uh, other factors that I think are um, important and they can play a role in your choice of topic. One is finance. Some of the fields like where I come from, we need quite a lot of money for, for research. So this money includes uh, me going for fields, sometimes sending the sample to a lab if we don't have that uh, if you don't have the lab in, in our university or institution. And yeah, and then maybe traveling, of course, there is also a cost of traveling to present your, your results and stuff like that. But the main cost is field work and, and analysis. So what is important is first to ask yourself, is this part of a funded project? If it's part of a funded project, then it's easy, it's a little bit easier for you. You probably just need to start at step number two, where you start, no, step number three, where you already get a broader topic from a funded project, because they usually already have an idea of what they want achieved. And then you just have to frame it to, uh, to be specific. And you need to help them see if that is, really feasible what they thought about. So funded project, usually much easier and you are also controlled. You cannot just come up with your own topic because you need to work within the framework of, of, of the project. Secondly, if in terms of finance is scholarships, if you are applying for a scholarship, sometimes they ask for, for you to propose a topic. 
but there are scholarships that are specific uh, to tackle certain issues or they want to capacitate countries in particular fields. I remember when we when I did my my master's, the scholarship I got then was uh, it's a spaces scholarship was funded by uh, BMBF. It's a German institution, but it was meant to capacitate um, Southern African countries in certain areas, and there were specific programs attached to that. So the the topics that you want has to do have to be in line with the scholarship um, or the areas that are going are needed to 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 capac to be capacitated by that particular scholarship. So you need to read and make sure that you stay within the defined uh, limits. So and then the other uh, the other question to consider: Does your topic require a lot of money? Sometimes there are roundabout ways on how can you uh, make your research a little bit more affordable. For instance, if you are doing um, qualitative or maybe you are doing questionnaires, nowadays people are using uh, things like Google Forms, which is, is, uh, is free and is readily available online. Instead of you going printing and uh, printing out uh, questions. So why does this matter in terms of choosing a topic? Because sometimes the person will say, okay, I'm not doing this because I'm not able to print out all the questionnaires that I need and all those things. But not realizing that you can actually um, do it using another way around. So if finance becomes a limiting factor to what you are really interested in, try to find ways around it. Uh, sometimes you can even approach companies. There are companies that are really willing to fund uh, as long as it's aligned to what they do. Again, when you are applying for funding or or when you have, we are proposing a topic and you don't really have funds and you plan to apply for funds, ask yourself whether your topic, is it aligned to the current or trending in national or international research agenda? So that help you because if, if there's, if you just do because I'm interested in this and what, what, if the, the funding agencies are not interested in that thing at a particular time, you might not be able to get the funds. Of course, there are times when you can turn around. Those uh, cases uh, exist. But in most commonly, it's good to align yourself to the research agenda of, of funding agencies so that it's possible for you to uh, secure some kind of funding. Um, another issue that I thought is also important is the question whether are you employed or not employed. The reason why I said I say this is because research now is moving towards um, having an impact in solving problems, real problems. We are not just doing research for the sake of doing research anymore. And governments and institutions. Um, these are places where most times what they do every day is some kind of research. And I usually advise people to say, if you are in a ministry that have several projects that are running, why not do your, your research in one of the projects? Because what we also find uh, failing is that most times people do a certain topic and then they cut it. I mean, when they finish, they stop, that's it. Even if there are some recommendation that could really make a, a big difference, they are never uh, implemented because you got your degree and that was it. But if you, are, if you take a topic which is already part of what you do every day, I, I think it will help even improving the implementation of, 
of this uh, recommendation or the results that scientists are getting from, from their work. And, and additionally, uh, if you are employed, is also a question of what can you improve in your workplace? What, how can you, your employer benefit from your research? Because uh, as much as one can say, no, um, I'm doing part-time, I'm fully time at work. There are times that you even use the company's time. So it is right for you to do something that could also help them. If there is a process, there are people that are doing, maybe you are doing something in strategic leadership or whatever. Do an assessment on um, performance of the company. How can you improve the performance? What is really triggering uh, poor services in your institution? That is something that even the company institution that you are working in will be happy to support. Might not be financially, but it could be easier for you to, to pass around your questionnaires and stuff like that. So also think about, if you are employed, think about something that you can implement even after your studies so that it has an impact. So, but in general, generally also think, ask yourself, is your topic interesting or is it just like any other topic? What is really special? What is coming out uh, from your research? Will it leave some kind of impact? Impact is, is also something that changes. Um, it's, it's not only to say, no, you change lives and whatever, but it could just be that you have contributed to knowledge, but which was really lacking. That is also impact. You don't need to, uh, to come up with a, a phone for, you to, for people to say that you have uh, created impact because you developed a new phone or, or a new car or something like that. As long as you have answered a question that is not answered and it's really important for that question to be answered, that is also impact. So I think that is more or less what I, I have on the topics. But I wanted to also um, answer a few questions from the registration form. Uh, there were a lot more questions and comments um, and people saying thank you for the platform. I also thank you for joining. Um, I, I tried to highlight some and not answer, of course, all of them, but this could also be a starting point for our discussion. To say, there's this one in the green, I really find it interesting because, and this is how we should uh, somehow phrase when you want, we are reaching out for help. What to consider when your topic is focused on reviewing an existing training program. So it's kind of very specific in terms of instead of saying, how can I come up with a, a, a topic? You know, it's very specific. So for, for this particular person, if you have, um, if you are reviewing a training, there's a reason why it's maybe being reviewed. Either the uh, cycle is come for it to be reviewed. So you can look at what were the successes, what things could be, how can it, things be done better and, and all those things. So there's really a lot that you can do with reviewing an existing program. What impacts, like how many graduates do you have and where are those graduates and, and stuff like that. So these are, you can do something like a tracer kind of a study. Uh, the second is I have a problem choosing methodology. You cannot choose methodology without reading. Unfortunately, the thing with research, and again, re, re, keep searching, is that you need to read. You need to read as smart maybe as you can if you are not really reading a, a, a lot of things, but try to be as, how can you get content out of most work, find a, a way. So, um, Make sure that you 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 read 
and then what others have done, you can find what method have they used to solve such a problem. Unless if you are coming up with something strictly very brand new that nobody have ever really thought of doing, but that is unlikely. Someone somewhere did something similar, then you can just uh, work on how can you improve it or how can you apply it to your context. This, the third one is about identifying gaps, the quick ways in identifying gaps. <laughs> there is no quick, 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 there is no shortcuts in research, really. You need to read, but what I could advise here is um, recently um, having to, to have some students who I recommended that, okay, try to make a table from all the work, but it's not quick, it's not easy, but it's it works and it's it's it found to I find it quite good process. Have a table with uh, all the work done in especially in that particular area that you want to in terms of location, find all the, the work related to your topic, of course, what has been done, what the what he and then you have uh, one column with who are the authors second is a title then what was the outcome what was the recommendations then you compare to say okay so this one found this this one found this the other one okay they recommended that we do this and that so there is no really shortcuts but that is one of the ways that you can do it try to have a table that you document the literature that you read because what we also find with um just doing um just going through and especially if you are not noting down you get a challenge to forget even where have you read that but if you have that table you will have it even at the end of your study if you remember something you can always go back to it and check what uh who has said what where did i find this Okay, so I think that um, most of the other topics are really part of what I've discussed. Um, there is a question about face-to-face. Uh, -face. Uh, currently, maybe that is for next year, we can think about such. For now, I, I will not be able to do a face-to-face. -face. I can just uh, try and do these sessions online. Yep, I think some question we can discuss. Uh, there was a question that is also key is about knowing the difference between uh, maybe PhD and research uh, ma master's thesis. But master's thesis, we do have a difference between the, the course, master's by coursework and then master's by thesis, and then we have PhD. So. Masters by coursework, you are most uh, times required only to do a mini thesis. But everything in, in terms of content really is the same. It's just to what extent you are going. Uh, in scientific way, usually at master's level, you should at least use two methods. And then at PhD level, you must use at least three scientific methods. Um, that's how some people differentiate it. But it's, I think it's really to the extent that you want, to, how do you go in depth of, 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 of that? So at master's level, you get introduced or you, you get to understand your, your field better. And then at PhD level also, you need to come up with something new. You need to bring new knowledge to your field. But in general, the topic can be the same. It's just the impact. So what is next for the next uh, months? Um, there will be a session on academic writing uh, that I will, uh, will be offered by one of my mentors. And then there will be a session also on a reference management system and have handling the research data and other tips around research on 
what probably most of us wish we knew even when we were students. So these are the uh, colleagues that are doing um, editing for, for, for research related activities. Um, in no way, I, I don't know, I'm not involved in uh, pricing and whatever. I just ask if anybody's interested to share their, their advert. So please conduct um, the details provided on the. So there are three people you can, I think, choose, or you can even conduct all of them and see which one resonates with you better. Right, thank you. Do we have some questions or reactions? Yes, uh, we have the first one from Alina. Um, hi, doctor. <laughs> hi. Thank you so much for a very informative uh, session. I actually was looking forward to it a whole lot because I missed the first one. Um, it was uh, very, very informative. Thank you so much for having this passion that will really benefit some of us that joined here. I think we all stayed here through the whole session because it was very interesting. And yeah, I just wanted to know, uh, one is always, uh, I've always had this at the back of my mind to say, what is the difference between thesis and dissertation or is it just one word uh, synonymous to the other one? And my other question would now catch me because I'm particularly interested in something. I'll try to be broad so that I don't just get a specific answer for myself. Um, you said there by masters and PhD, uh, your methodologies need to be like two, diff, three different methodologies trying to maybe prove the same thing or could you emphasize on that maybe? Um, okay, I think I'll, I'm better taking one question at a time, I mean one person at a time as much as I want to avoid dialogue, but it's I think it's much helpful um, so this thesis and dissertation, some people use it interchangeably, uh, but the general was that uh, the dissertation is used for, for the PhD and the thesis is for, for, for masters. So there is, I think I don't have further explanation than that. But it's, it's not really that deep. people use it sometimes really interchangeably. But in terms okay. like uh, at UNAM, we use dissertation for, for PhD and masters, uh, we use thesis. In terms of the methodologies, um, okay, so one of the, of the, I'm trying to find a broad, a broad, um, also, not to be specific, because what comes to mind, especially from talking to you, is always groundwater. But um, in terms of, for instance, COVID-19, the example that we were just talking about here. So one can use interviews to get the perceptions from, or, or from the students, and then you can maybe do um, you can do questionnaires. Those are already two types of methods that you have used to answer your questions. It's, it, mm -hmm. it's, I think it's also stem from not, sometimes there are parameters of things that, especially for us, uh, this is specifically for scientific, I'm not really well sure about other research that some of the things you cannot, um, you are never really sure with one method and it's always good to use a different approach to validate it. Yeah, no, so that's I... clear. Thank you very much. And then we had a hand from anybody else with a hand? It's gone.
Oh, then it's clear. It means that you guys are ready to to do research. Um, let me just look in the comments if there is somebody with a question. No, there are no questions in the comments. I think. Uh... Okay. Yeah. The the presentation I will I will share and I will also load the. The recording on YouTube since my skills failed me today. Uh, um, Doc. Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to add something on the on the way that I I have learned just to emphasize on what you said on the writing out your literature review mm -hmm. points. Yeah, I just want to emphasize the point of uh, creating a table. Uh, yeah, the best way is to create the table on um, on um, on Excel, and you clearly name it, and you create a template that is very very clear. That okay, this is it's the title, it's the year, it's the objectives, it's the method used the discussions or the analysis use the conclusion and the recommendation then you write according to those themes the first paper i got it from this person and it, it you you deduce the information from that person and filling in your excel table at the end you end up having 10 10 research topic that we have summarized that will make it very simple for you to identify the gaps that we have talked of, the controversies, the contradictions. Then you can see, okay, the first three or the first or the last three, they have the same concept. They're actually talking of the same thing. But look, this last guy, the ninth and the tenth, they are talking of something different. Why is he disagreeing? Maybe he's disagreeing on methodology used, or maybe it's disagreeing on the analysis used, maybe on the time frame. This was done 20 years ago, and this one was tried to do it. Time have changed. It will really help you to pick up your gaps. And when you find that differences, look at the conclusion and what they have recommended. Then it can help you to get your gaps out and write. And then your gaps will be able to help you to do your problem statement. That is just how I have learned it. That was just a small comment. Okay, thank you for that addition. Uh, sh uh, there is shelter, you typed that you need have a question, but there is first a hand from the two Marcus, first Shiweda and then uh, Marcus H. Okay. Um... Uh, hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How are you? Uh, I'm very good. How are you, Dr. Joseph? Fine. Thank you for the presentation. It was really good. Uh, what I haven't been clear about, um, it was something you mentioned not long ago that you don't want to really engage on dialogue. Um, I'm just assuming uh, my contribution should be very short. Um, I want to make a contribution looking at the questions that were posed. Uh, this is something you have completely explained already, uh, but I, I think I can just also put it in one sentence to maybe help the people understand it in a different way, in which I have also got to understand it and it helped me quite a lot. Uh, it is more about choosing the topic or having a relevant topic or how to make your PhD topic relevant. Uh, I think this is quite uh, what many questions were about. Uh, they are just placed in different ways, but that's more the main target, I think. Um, yeah, so the way I usually explain this is to say uh, at a PhD level, you are if, if you are a scientist um, be it in health or ecology or something you already identified 
your interest within your area of study? What do you really want to become? And as a PhD candidate, you want to specialize in something that you can finally explain the rest of your life. So with that gap into your science interest or science corner, you then identify what is the issue. If you are a conservationist, what's the problem about conservation do we have? Um, with that already, you would come up with the problems you have within conservation, number one, number two, number three, and which one aligns to your future goals as a scientist? What do you want to be known for? And what, do you, what solutions do you want to be remembered for? With that already, you can already say, this problem, I'm going to face it. And the topic will definitely just be about that problem. It doesn't have to have too many critical words. If you are not doing physics, then you don't need some, you know, terms about things. It, it can be few words straightforward about that specific problem. And then like, um, um, oh, I just forgot the name. Uh, just before I started speaking, uh, the speaker, then he said, you can come up with ways now to look at different studies and identify the gaps uh, that are explaining that very specific issue that you are trying to address. So, Doctor, that's just what I wanted to add to the points you have been explaining for us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for bringing in that aspect of what do you want to be known for? That is very key at PhD level because that is the knowledge that you are bringing in. Um, it could be uh, maybe a method that you are using if it's completely new. It could also be um, an area that is uh, you are focusing on that nobody really ever looked at those. So it, that is really important to, to consider at PhD level. Thank you for that contribution. Then we have Marcus. Good evening, Doc. Hi, um, thank, thank you for the presentation. Quite informative, and we are learning a lot every day with this session. Uh, my question is more on the master level, uh, especially when it comes to mini thesis and uh, and thesis. Uh, quite often, um, when one is doing a course master uh, master's uh, degree by course coursework, you are um, quite often you have to do a mini thesis, but sometimes you are also sometimes you end you, you end up doing a, a full thesis. So as a student, one had you know where to draw the line. Uh, to what length should one go in a mini thesis and to what length should one go in terms of uh, a full thesis? Um, I think for example, I, uh, when I did my master, uh, we I did coursework but I was still required to do a full thesis. That means my thesis was still a 12 month thesis, not six months. But uh, my, our counterparts that have the same course similar to us had a mini thesis. But in terms of the quality, sometimes you find someone having uh, a mini thesis going in more details than someone having a full thesis. How, where do one draw the line? especially when it comes to choosing a topic for a mini thesis and a thesis. That is actually just my question because uh, we, as students, we really get a lot of conf confused between the two. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Katukula, I see your mic is on. Yeah, okay. Um, so really the difference between the, the two masters it's it's also very confusing for me it's some i mean for most scientists and not scientists but academics sorry for that too much science so it's it's it becomes a bit confusing but what i know for instance at unam what is um the the main difference is just the amount of work that is required to you. So it's more like to what depth or to what extent. And they really just differentiate it in terms of um, page limits. So that's to say, I think there's they, like, 
you can write for mini thesis how many pages and then for for full thesis to this page but in general also the output of thesis entirely depend on on the students the the supervisor and of course the structure that are put in by the institution so if the institution requires you to do it for 12 months then it's different uh, to institutions that require it to do it six months. So it really depends on what is the, the role in that um, institution or for that specific program. I know, for instance, even in our department, we do have uh, programs at master's level where one uh, master's is having six months uh, only of thesis and the other one is 12 months. So it's really how you have designed the, 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 the program. But in terms of content, like if it's scientific based to say methodologies and what, they both would require you to do two uh, methods. So you just don't go as much in detail as the other per se. So some, it's really something that is also not so clear to everyone. Thank you, uh, then we had um, Shelter also wanted to ask, or is this the question that you have? Can you just explain your question, please? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, I just have uh, a question. I'm currently doing masters. I think I've just learned something that there are different types of masters. And then I think mine is masters through coursework. And we are doing a mini thesis for just five months. And then uh, I'm almost done with topic selection, but I was a bit worried after narrowing all my topics. Now I'm left with two options, but still I was not so sure whether the topics that I have, if they are correct, I don't know if you help with maybe just advising if the topics are okay or they're too narrow or too broad or what. Those are the options that I've written on the chat message. Like for example, option one, I don't know. I just want you maybe if you can assist me whether the topic is okay or not. Like I wrote like the implementation of e-tendering system in Botswana construction industry. Is it fine or is too narrow or is too broad? Yeah, no, that option one I think is, is okay. Uh, but I would also advise you to put it through Google Scholar. You can even remove uh, maybe some tips on when you are using Google Scholar. You can put a first your full topic as it is. If nothing is coming out, try to remove a location like Botswana in this case. Maybe somebody have already looked at implementation of procurement system in a different town or in a different uh, uh, area. And also it could be in Botswana, but maybe not in the construction industry. So try to remove uh, uh, topics or words that limit your, your search, like the, the location and, and so on. But the first options looks okay, but I would prefer maybe send me an email for that. Um, yeah, then I can try to have a look at that in, in better than just, I don't want to just look at like this. This is what I was mm -hmm. explaining to say that so it becomes a little bit challenging to give a straight answer. Oh, I see. Yeah. No, thank you so much. I'll contact you via inbox. All right. Right. Um, looks like we don't have comments anymore. Are we all good? I think we are good. Great. Oh, today we, this is good timing. Started exactly okay. at, yeah, yeah. Um, I have one few inquiry. Mm -hmm. When it comes to referencing, 
uh, how old should be the reference should be that need to be considered? Because quite often we are, we are being told that uh, you can't be in 2022 and you are still referencing a document of, of uh, 2006 or three as if there was no research done uh, from that period until now. So perhaps what, what is the minimum uh, um, year that one need to consider when you're doing the review? Um, usually institutions, they ask at least five years. Most research, most things should be the last five years or some they say 10, but there's also some of the key literatures that you cannot leave out. For instance, if you are using a specific method from 1990 or so, or nine, even in the 80s, you are ought to reference the original author, and then you can add a secondary references for, for the new developments. So maybe somebody um, have a, a diversion, or they have added, or they have changed the methodology, they have graded it or something. So try to have the original one and then the new, uh, and that is really mostly for, for the methodology section. That's where you can have old references. But for the other ones, uh, unless if nothing is done, for instance, if you are looking at um, a study area, which has not, which has been, um, Entirely studied or poorly studied, you can use old reference to say the last information I can find in this area is is this. There is just nothing. That's the only way when you are allowed to use a very old references. Okay, thank you, Doc. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone. I think we have. We have used time efficiently today, though we started a bit late, uh, but uh, this was planned for one hour and we finished in one hour. So thank you, everyone. I hope that we meet next month for another session. God willing. Have a good evening. Doctor, yes. just before you go, I, I, I got caught. Um, uh, something intriguing there by the references. Né? Um, there are studies, for example, like 2005, but this, this study that you find also is not the, the original owner of the work. They still say modified after who, who. Which reference must I go with it? Must I go with the original one just because, or must I go with this one just because it's more recent? Um. The, the advice also there is that try to to find the original if you're able to find the original because a lot of time you will be surprised when somebody reference someone and it's not even what is written in the original document and you might be uh, benefit more from reading the original document so first try to find the original document and then you can reference both of them. And I think that one is, is much better. If you can't find the original, then you can reference this one, what really they, they are having in their paper. No, I understand that. But one challenge I've seen, especially with us in science, in this geoscience, which is not really like our, our information, maybe the, 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 the studies have been done, but they are not freely available. Maybe you have to buy this from Elsevier or something like that. It, it becomes really challenging. I, I remember the institution I was a few years ago uh, had a, a free pass to the students. They could access certain uh, things that are usually being paid for for free, but that's not the case with a lot of in, in institutions. So how does one go about? Because I've seen that they said danger in saying the study, the, the topic is maybe poorly studied because you can't find anything, but it's either the, the data has been not distributed or published for open sourcing. Yeah, so um, there are few sites where uh, students can download 
such um, free, free, um, I hear the one was science pub or what is it called? I don't really use it. As at UNAM, we do have a, a what? We do have a, a free pass in most of the journals. As long as you have student number and, and so, you are able to, to access res, uh, these research papers. But what I can also advise is to just have also um, create some connections, networks, where you are able to ask um, your fellows in other universities to download articles for you. That was something I used to do. Uh, also, <coughs> if you are attached to a certain institution and maybe it doesn't have that um, access to, to look for articles, even when you are at home, like we have at UNAM, you can ask your librarians to download them for you. They 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 have what they call in the library uh, in most of the library that if I don't have this access to this article, I can ask my colleagues to in in a different institution. So you can go through the libraries also to to get this. Okay, thank you very much, Doctor. So, yeah, uh, Doc Doc, one more. Uh, yeah, th that science hub, um, it's very, very beneficial it, uh, in different disciplines. It's, um, it can really help. Yeah, can you please send it to me? I will add it to the slides. Yeah, si science hub, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone, then. I think we are good to go but with references there is a, the the next either next session or the session in october we will be talking about uh, those kind of things cool 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 good night thank you very much.